All righty, Shabbat Shalom, Miss Baka. This is Maury Madad Yahoo. Want to welcome you to another live stream of My Living Branch on Rumble. So we are so glad to to have you here today. Let me just make sure I tell everyone Shabbat Shalom, Miss Baka, in the chat. Pray everyone is having a wonderful day. The weather's starting to warm up, but guess what? Next week is supposed to be cold. Get down cold again. Just like the weather. Never know what to expect. So as we go into our lesson today, please let me know if you can hear me fine. That way I want to make sure we're coming through loud and clear. Alrighty, so we're thankful for another um, event, and prayerfully you can see the screen okay. See my slide presentation. Let's see. Okay, yeah, it's, it's coming up. Wonderful. All right, today we're going to be going over Wisdom Part 2. The first thing we're going to do, we're going to look at some, uh, we'll finish out looking over some of the uh, homework. And then we'll top it out with uh, just some things on mindset. And then I think I got something that's really going to, for some, it might be a revelation. I've never heard it explained like the father gave it to me. So. We're going to give it to you like he gave it to me and prayerfully it will be a revelation to all of us. All right, let's pray. Baruch Hashem Yahuwah Elohinu Malach HaAlam. Father, we say told our Rabbah for all of our Ms. Baka, our family, both near and far. We're asking you, Father, to stretch out your hands of understanding today and you know, we get a lot of knowledge, Father, but we want your understanding of how things operate and how you put it in motion. So we're asking you to give us what we need to bring that understanding to full circle so that we are without excuse. We have it straight from you. We have your understanding, not just something we came up with because of our own agendas and other things that come into play but because we have it straight from you we know that it shall be accomplished father we bless you we thank you in the name of mashiach yahusha for the learning today hallel to yahuwah amen all righty let's see here so Continual accountability. Remember, if you go back, this has been a long series, Fear of Yahuwah, and now we're in accountability. And we want to make sure we're holding our words and actions accountable according to the tree of life and not to any other standard. The tree of knowledge and good and evil is a mixture. We don't want a mixture. We want straight tree of life. This is the disclaimer. All of this is to build a foundation. Many don't have foundation and they're trying to navigate. They're trying to get to a destination without a map that they've never been to. Unfamiliar territory. So that's why we try to build a solid foundation. That way you know how to navigate. And even if you get lost, you still can find your way because you know how to read the map. All right. So you can read over this at your leisure if you decide to replay. Now, let's look at the homework. So this homework, this one, the first one I'll look at comes from one of our brothers. I won't give a name, but he'll. 
you know, once I read it, he'll he'll know who he is. Um, and remember, the question was, what wisdom or righteous advice would you give to righteous divorced women on their next step? Please give examples in scriptures, Old Testament, witness New Testament. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, he starts off first, praise you who our father for Yahusha in Yahusha's name. So concerning this, I would first get an understanding. <clears throat> and this seems to be um, something that a lot of people have said, why she is divorced. I wouldn't want to put anyone down without knowing full details. For this question, I would just say that because she is righteous, her ish was in the wrong. Uh, well, okay, well, let me continue on, then I'll address that. Which caused the divorce, although he divorced her, is obviously was for a right, a reason other than her righteousness. Okay, now, when I say a righteous divorced woman, Okay, remember, she's keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. But what did Deuteronomy 24 say? We might have to bring it up. Because I, I want you to see um, certain things when we talk about, um, when we're talking about Scripture. Now, there's an uncoveredness. Now, we've been over uncoveredness. We've been over what it means to be uncovered. Okay? And <clears throat> because of the uncoveredness, she lost favor in his eyes. Now, depending on you know, how you're defining uncoveredness or uh, uncleanness because remember you have different things that can make you unclean that aren't necessarily sin um, she could have different things that don't that brought her into this unfavorableness so immediately you know we think you know sin but there, there can be things that are, are borderline that could bring it. So just because I put the word righteous there, um, I did it on, on purpose. Just, just to bring out more things. So that's why I'm, I'm, I'm constantly challenging you to think, you know, um, did it necessarily have to be sin? Okay, uh, now it goes on and says, to all the Okoti, I would say first, let Yahuwah match you with your ish. Do not go out looking for someone because you're lonely. Loneliness is good. It connects you with Yah. Do not depend on worldly men to satisfy your needs. And there can be worldly men in righteous places. <laughs> and what do I mean? You can have uh, worldly men even in this work, walk. But that a righteous man duty. Uh, hold on, Mr. Park. Um, do, 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 do not depend on the worldly men to satisfy your needs. Yes, women need to have a man to protect them and build with them, but that it's a righteous man duty. Any relationship you get in must be built on righteousness. So if you are divorced because you were with a man who has nothing to do with Yah and has no desire to do so, it is not your fault that he doesn't see the righteousness in you. Okay. Now, specifically, we, since we were addressing um, scripture, we were we were 
addressing how scripture addresses, which is uh, righteous with righteous or believer with believer. So um, just just for, you know, case in point. Because we can only give opinions or um, righteous wisdom and stuff for when we dealing with believer, unbeliever. Because remember, scripture was designed for believer and believer. My next step for you is to pray and to seek the father. If it is the father's desire to give you another ish that you can build with. It will be done. You never know who is out there for you, but do not be blind to the fact that this will take time. You uh, will know when the one is the one key is to patience. Definitely agree with that. Then he gives two scriptures. Uh, you can uh, you can jot them down, read them later. Psalms 40, 16 and Ecclesiastes 7 verse 8. Uh, I would also use the time to self-reflect and see what you can do to better yourself in the father's eyes so that you can see the path more clearly and do not um, and do not alone a man to make you stumble. Um, do not let a man to make you stumble. I think this will help you be the best Isha possible. That is the goal of a wife to be a great helper. Okay. So now, um, I, I want to reiterate, we've got to make our standards. Um, if you're looking towards marrying again, we've got to make our standards scripturally realistic. Okay. What what is the world's standard? What are, what are women in the world looking for? Six figures, six pack, six feet tall, all that good stuff. Okay, what should a a righteous woman be looking for? Hmm. That that's the part you got to get right, because if you're going by the world standard, six pack, six feet, um, six figures, you're going to miss what the father has for you because his standard is doesn't even go like that. Hmm. hmm, hmm. And if, I think if we can get past that part. We'd be all right because statistically speaking, if you were looking for someone like that, it's going to be hard to find. <laughs> and, and because what percentage of those men are righteous? Hmm. Ask yourself that. So having a realistic expectation of what scripture wants you to look for would be great. Okay, let's go to the next. Uh, this is from another one of our king. Let's see. First, he said, uh, my advice to a righteous divorced woman is to reconcile back to her husband immediately. Okay, now the only problem with that is if if he sent her out the house and he found something um something in her caused her to lose favor, then for reconciliation to take place, first of all, she can't have been been out with another man. She couldn't have married anyone else. Second thing, uh that, that whatever caused her to lose favor has to be dealt with because, you know, I don't know of anyone that wants to bring someone back in and still deal with the same thing. So that's something to consider. 
okay? And we have to, I, I know we want to say, um, you know, yeah, Mashiach did say from the beginning it wasn't so. And, but this was put into the law. It's there. So we can't negate and say it's not there. It is there. So we have to address it from the standpoint that it is written. Okay, he goes on, um, who hates divorce? So I encourage everyone, we went over before, what word was divorce used for divorce in that particular passage? And we did discuss it in an earlier lesson. So if you can fix this, I would do that immediately. Um, if you look at Matthew 19, Yahusha said, uh, stated in verse 5, For this cause shall a man leave his mother and father and shall cleave to his, wo his woman, and the two shall be one flesh. Wherefore, there is no more two, but one flesh. Well, you who has joined together, no man, let no man put asunder. Okay, also, she would really want to try and keep this relationship together because Matthew states, blessed are the peacemakers for they are called the sons and daughters of Yahuwah and blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they shall be satisfied. For staying satisfied in your husband or and wife is important qualities to have in being set apart to Yahuwah. Blessed are the merciful for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are, okay. So, you know, I, I go back again and I have to reiterate that if that particular text says and reconciliation, man, that's, that is great. Um, but if she finds no favor in his eyes because he has found a matter of uncleanness, in her and he sent her out the house you know you you have to really address that because <clears throat> that uncleanness is was part of the problem let's see Okay, now I won't go through everything, um, but I'm I'm gonna go through a little bit more on this one. Let's see. Remember, our righteousness must exceed those of the five scribes and Pharisees to enter to the kingdom. We are not to act like a nation where divorce is running rampant. Another thing to consider is that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable for judgment. Whoever insults his brother will be liable for counsel, and whoever says you fool will be liable for the hellfires. So if you're offering your gift to you who and remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift at the altar and go first be reconciled to your brother and then bring your gift to the altar. So now I would, I would say, hey, look, we want everybody. You no, know, nobody gets married with the, with I'm gonna divorce them the next day, in mind. Usually, we don't know a person's character until we've lived with them, we've been around with them, we've seen their habits in and out. So, you know, it, you, you definitely, you can, when, when you get married, you're getting a, you're getting a mold, I would say. And you're supposed to fashion that into something beautiful and if the Isha is on, on the same page, she's supposed to help you fashion that into something beautiful. So two things can happen. The man doesn't begin the fashioning 
or the man could fashion, be fashioning and the Isha not help. It, it's gonna, you're going to see what I'm going to tell you later and show you later. It's going to take both. It's, it's not just one side or the other. It takes both sides. Let's see. Okay, and he does mention the the um the uh let's see, I'll read what he wrote. A perfect example of divorce and not putting away your wife would have to be the uh the birth of Yahusha. Now that you know, when when I look at that, that's definitely on a a uh a, a higher level. And the reason I say that because the messenger had there was purpose in all of that, and the messenger intervened because the will of the father had to be done in this instance. Um, the fact that Joseph was a righteous man was evident in the situation where Miriam was found with a child before they came together. Uh, then Joseph being a just man and not willing to make a public example was mine to put away privately. But after considering and thinking on these things thoroughly in this process, Yahuwah sent a messenger. Okay. So it was evident that he wanted to be righteous, but he was going to put her away. But the messenger came and told him it, it and said, this is okay. This is of Yahuwah. So that, that's the difference maker. Um, and you who ascend the Melachim, and they uh, and they appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of Dawid, fear not. Take unto you Miriam, your woman or wife, for that which is in her is of the Ruach Hokadesh. Okay, so that's you know that one definitely has uh, merit. That. Whatever we're doing, we need to do it righteously. All right, let's see. Uh, let's go. Let's see. My advice for a righteous, and this is another one of our uh, king. Uh, my advice for a righteous divorce woman would be for her to pray for a righteous male covering for her and to actively seek him with the father's guidance. The woman should have righteous, uh, 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 righteous authority over her head for protection, provision, guidance. Um, the woman is described as the weaker vessel. That's in first Peter three, seven and needs protection because she is more susceptible to be attacked and manipulated by the enemy. Okay, that goes again back to what was, what was she created for? She wasn't created to be a warrior. She was created to help. It could be good for a righteous divorced woman to find a man that Yah has appointed in leadership as a Moray slash teacher, as a king, um, Sharak, a minister, that is capable of offering accountability and spiritual protection for the woman. Because remember when I said assembly, it doesn't give direct line to accountability. Because you can sit in an assembly, but who's accountable for you? Because who knows your ins and outs, what you're doing, that you can be held to a standard by. If you're just sitting in, this, in an assembly, you know, a leader could do it, but the leader don't know you, don't interact with you. How can he do it? Okay, a righteous divorced woman. Uh, was to remarry a righteous man, she would have someone to govern her and would regain marriage marriage rights. 
A divorced woman could also be under the covering of a righteous man's household by becoming a concubine or female servant with a, writ, uh, with a written agreement or Torah-based covenant. And the example he used was um, uh, Abraham had wives, uh, female servants, concubines. They were a part of his household and were very blessed and under Abraham's covering. And you can find that if you want to read um, that, that Abraham did things righteously. Genesis 26 verse 5. And if you go back to Genesis 25, you can find it'll talk about he he gave gifts to the concubines and sent them away. So it all that's in scripture. All right, do I have let's see that was, I think I got two more. One more. One more. And then I'll come back to the comments. And let's see. Now I was I was expecting more ladies, more of the coachy to write in, but you know, I had quite a, you know, quite a few brothers write in, but I was expecting more Cote to write in, but I roll with what I get. Okay, now this isn't a Cote, so let's see what she has to say. This was very difficult for me to write, Moray. Going to be honest. I'm giving advice to myself. The divorced woman trying to walk in righteousness and I have to dig deep because this feels like a test to see if I understand the series, and if I understand what Yahoo is trying to show me and if I'm willing to be humble and submit myself moving forward. Those are good introductory words. Because this is all about self-evaluation. And, you know, no one's picking. Because you could, you were, you could have been in marriage and not had the knowledge that you have now. Okay, if, if you are walking you walking in righteousness according to what you had. You, you see what I'm saying? But as you grow, your righteousness should grow. Now, if you start to learn the law, statutes, and commandments, and, and you just stay stagnant, then your righteousness is tarnished because you know more than you are shining forth in. So that's why we're having these series to educate, to help you to grow. Nobody might have not, they might not told you what a, what, what you're supposed to do, that you're a help. You thought, you thought, hey, my, my equivalent title, I'm a queen. Well, Israel didn't have any queens. And the ones in scripture that were called queens were pagan or or operating in a pagan nation because they were taken off into captivity. But Israel in itself did not have queens. So and, and if we wanted to go a step further, we weren't supposed to have a king. But what did happen? Israel wanted to be like the nations. And that's how we got kings. So kings and queens weren't a part of our culture. 
just like we go back, divorce wasn't really something, it wasn't in scripture. But when, after they came out of Egypt and were in the wilderness, what, they don't go over the exact part of the hardness, the hardness of heart that happened. But Moshe was permitted to write in the Torah that a man could divorce his, his wife. And this, these were the reasons that was a re, it was given a reason in scripture. Okay. So let's see. Okay, and she, she starts out with um, the word being a lamp and a light to light to our feet. So that's good. Okay, number, then she goes on. Ask about the situation of her divorce to understand, then research and look at the scripture. Depending on her circumstance, let her read and study the scriptures relevant that explain the law pertaining to marriage and divorce so that if she is eligible to be remarried, that uh, she would understand her role as a wife for her next husband. Then as a sister before giving any advice, pray to Yahuwah too for the wisdom and guidance to give her the answer she needs to move forward. Yahuwah needs to have the esteem in this situation. If she is receptive to hearing the word of Elohim, what the scripture says. Okay, and then she um, lists Deuteronomy 24, 1 through 4, uh, Leviticus 20. Um, then, the, then she goes on. She needs to understand her role, how Yah created her, be accountable and change her behavior according to scripture. Also explain that a covering is needed after she has fixed the issue she may have had doing the marriage. Given her righteous example in scripture of women after leaving her father's house, went into her husband's house, and depending on the circumstance, these women had, cover, uh, had coverings. Then she lists Ruth, um, Rebecca, Dinah, and then um, Hadassah, cousins, uncles, brothers. Then let's see, she goes on Proverbs 3 and James 1, 5 through 8. Yahuwah has the roadmap for your life. So I would emphasize this scripture. Proverbs 3, because if you understand his mindset, we will not waver, but walk in faith unwavering. If she initiated the voice, explain that there is no law in scripture where a woman initiates a divorce and see if there is any opportunity for reconciliation. Questions for her. Is she willing to humble herself? Are you truly penitent? Have you put away your sin or uncoveredness or um, uncleanness? She didn't say that. I just added that. Have you humbly accepted the ch ch uh, chastening rod? Then after understanding and answering these questions, honestly, wait for Yahuwah while you um, while you serve him wholeheartedly. Don't rush into finding any covering, but a righteous man. OK. Now, I want to thank everyone for participating. Um, <clears throat> we're all growing. So when, when I read stuff, I'm, I'm like. I'm just trying to help. I'm not criticizing you or or trying to make any. That's why I didn't read names, but trying to help you grow. When you're looking at scripture, okay, it's easy to try to take it away and say, "Well, it didn't exist. It doesn't." But it's but it's, it's there. 
So we, we have to deal with it being there, but deal with it righteously. So let me see what comments we've got so far. Okay, so uh, Miriam uh, says, I believe the biggest problem is when one comes to the truth and the other one person refuses. In the end of the at the end uh, or in the end of the day, there can be strife in all areas of life because it's a lifestyle. Yes. And that's why you that's why we dealt with some of the wisdom in the last lesson. Because when we were together in as a nation. Who you married would have known the scriptures, but now that we're scattered abroad and people are waking up to this truth. You have to be able to move righteously. And you have to know how the father is setting the standard and wants you to move forward. Sometimes we walk in, in doubt, but put your feet on solid ground. If, if you have been through that before, take a deep breath, pause, and recollect yourself. Get your feet back under you, as they would say. And pray and seek him before you move forward. Because you want your next move to be checkmate. Because the devil thought he had you. All righty. Now we're going to um, go over. I'm telling you, I think, I think uh, the father has something for us here at the end. And once again, I want to say thank those that sent in the homework. I really appreciate it. It gives a chance for others to hear and see. And it challenges all of us to grow. Now, prepare your mind. So if a woman that's been divorced, and this could be any woman, you could still be married. You got to get your mindset right. You've got to come to a conclusion. Either you're going to walk in your who is design or you're going to self design. Okay. Which one are you going to do? And you got to know what his design is. And, uh, and when we conclude this lesson, I'm going to show you it's built right into the text into some words. So when we look at mindset, okay, when we talk about heart, we're talking about your mind. Let's look at Deuteronomy 4, uh, chapter 9, verse 4. Do not think in your heart after Yahuwah your Elohim has driven them out before you, saying, because of my righteousness, you who has brought me in to possess this land. But it is because of the wrong of these nations that Yahuwah is driving them out from before you. Now, I want you to think about when when um, Hawa was brought to Adam. It, she could have easily been saying her mind. The, the the father brought me to him because he needs help. And because he needs help, I need to, that help turns into, I need to lead him. I need to show him. I need to instruct him. But that's not the kind of help the father wanted because he had already given instructions. He had already designated what Adam should be doing. And her job was to help him in what he was supposed to be doing. 
So in, in this scripture, they're assuming a point that's not true. They're thinking because the father drove all these people out of the land of Canaan. He drove them out because we're righteous. No, he didn't drive them out because they were righteous. He drove them out because the nations were evil before them. They were wicked. So you got to make sure you coming into a man's life has purpose, the right purpose, the right design, the right motive. Sometimes people are deceptive. Yes. They come in seeing one thing, but then once they get in, their whole attitude and disposition, everything changes. So make sure you have the right reasons why you're getting married, why you're entering into a covenant or relationship, or even if it's just a simple covering for accountability, know why you're doing it. Okay, now look at this. You think your mindset isn't important, but I'm telling you, you butter. You better you better check this out because the world the world and the system has poisoned the women, they've poisoned the men. And right now this subject you go out on social media is the talk of the town. But see, we've got to be able to do it in a whole different fashion. We've got to be able to do it from a righteous scriptural standpoint. Okay, Proverbs 4.23. Watch over your heart, that's your mind, with all diligence. For out of it are the sources of life. Life. Isn't this the same thing that Mashiach talked about? That the, there's a heart, mouth connection. <clears throat> so you need to watch over it with all diligence. Watch who you take advice from. Watch who you let f you feed from. Watch who you hang around with. Watch the words that come out of your mouth. It, I mean, you got to watch over your heart, this, this mind of yours. You got to watch over because it feeds. It can be programmed. So you need to get you some high encryption codes on your mind and lock it. When I say lock it, so that stuff that doesn't deal with Torah, doesn't deal with righteousness, has no base for how you live set apart, it doesn't come in. Proverbs 23, 7. For as he thinketh in his heart, his mind, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart, his mind is not with thee. Now let's look at some Brit Hadashah. Now, We've read this before, 2 Corinthians 10, verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through Elohim, to the pulling down of stronghold, casting down of imaginations. Where do you think the imaginations lie? And some of us hear voices telling us to do stuff. And... We follow those voices. But there should be a voice telling you to do righteous stuff. Do you follow that? Or are you just listening to the voices? You can tell, you can compare it, what they're telling you to do with scripture, and you can figure out where it's coming from. And every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of Elohim 
and bring into captivity every thought into the obedience of Messiah. Of course, in King James, that's why I put it there, it's going to have Christ. Now, look at this. For let this mind be in you, which was also in Messiah, Yahusha, who being in the form of Elohim, hmm, didn't woman come from man, but did not regard equality with Elohim a matter to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant and coming to be in the likeness of men and having been found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, the death of the stake. That's the scripture's version. So you're supposed to be, as a woman, a reflection of that man. So the question is, what are you reflecting? How are you reflecting? Or is the reflection dulled over? Hmm. Because you can get something that has reflecting properties, but because of it's weathered, it's tarnished, because of things that have happened to it, hasn't kept clean, it becomes something that doesn't reflect anymore. It loses its reflective properties. <clears throat> But if you keep it clean, care for it, it'll maintain reflective properties. Okay, Colossians chapter 2, verse 6. Therefore, as you accepted Messiah, Yahusha, the master, walk in him, having been rooted and built up in him and established in belief, as you were taught, overflowing in, in it with Thanksgiving, see to it that you, uh, excuse me, see to it that no one makes a prey of you through philosophies or empty deceit according to the tradition of men, according to the elemental matters of the world and not according to Messiah. So in, so in other words, watch who's teaching you. Because you are what you eat. Now I want you I want you to think about when you go in a grocery store. And let's say you go down the cereal aisle. And especially the kids' cereal, what they do? They put the cereal right at eye level for children. And they put cartoon characters on it. The box look good, but what's in the box is not good for them. But they're they're training them to just look at the box. And they'll pick their cereal according to the look of the box. Not what's in the box, because they're children. They'll pick up the box and they, they'll look at the ingredients. They don't care about the ingredients long as it tastes good and sugary. Now, even as an adult, when you walk through, they have all these healthy claims for you. But they don't tell you that the, the ingredients is hybridized that you're eating. They don't tell you all the artificial things that they're putting in there that are harmful for you. All you see is it can say organic, natural, uh, low sugar. I mean, it, it, they'll have all kind of advertisements on the box. But you got to go look at the ingredients and see what's in it. So I say, I say this because 
Ladies, you're looking at the box too much. Six feet, six figures, six pack, <laughs> whatever else come with it. But you're not looking at the ingredients. Does he have righteousness? Is he patient? Is he family oriented? You know, all the things, is he a protector? Is he a provider? I mean, I, I could go on and on. You know, is Elohim first in his life? Then you flip back out over and say, man, this box sure look good. When it's not the box you are concerned about because you're not going to eat the box. What you consume is on the inside of the box and you want to make sure it's good for you. And this can apply to men too. You know, it's not just, this is just not for the, the ladies. Men, this is for you too. Because I, I can tell you, if 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 um well <laughs> how can i put this we we use we'll use their rating scale you get nines and tens then more than likely you're going to have problems cuz everybody going to be looking and it's going to be a lot of attention it's going it's to be, the focus is going to be more outward than inward. you got to have a balance. So, same thing for ladies. you got to have a balance. Because you want to be with someone that you can fulfill Yah's purpose. Okay, let's keep, well, let me jump over to the comments, see if anybody said anything. Nope, nobody said anything, so let's keep it, let's keep it rolling. Okay, now, got another witness from the Brit Hottest Child of the New Testament, Ephesians 4, verse 17. So this I say, and witness in the master, that you should no longer walk as the nations. What did I tell you before? We're trying to walk like the world walks. The nations is what got us in trouble. And we, as a family, we've been reading. We're up through, um, we almost at the end of 2 Samuel. And th this is a good Good thing if you have a family and you want to do something every day, you have children, all of y'all sit down, read every night, read one chapter starting from Genesis. You will be surprised how fast you go through the scriptures and through the Bible. Just read one chapter a night. And if your kids are of reading age, let them read a verse or two. Then one parent or you you read one night. You, I mean, you, you read, then let them read a verse or two. Then um, the wife read one night, the husband read one night. Whatever your family dynamic is. Let the, let the children interact and you do this every night. Every night without fail. At a set time or before the kids bedtime. And I'm telling you, you will get through scriptures. We're we're almost at the end of First um, Samuel, and and I'm thinking, I'm just just reading one chapter, and I'm like, man, this is this uh this is some good stuff. Just one chapter a night. Okay, let's keep reading. In the futility of your mind, having been darkened in their understanding, having been estranged. From the life of Messiah, I mean of Yahusha, uh, of Elohim, because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the hardness of their heart, who having become callous, have given themselves up to indecency, to work all uncleanliness with greediness. 
but you have not so learned Messiah. If indeed you have heard him and were taught by him, as the truth is in Yahusha, that you put off with regard to the former behavior, the old man being corrupted according to the desires of the of deceit and to be renewed in the spirit of your mind that you put on the renewed man, which is created according to Elohim in righteousness and set apartness of truth. So. You've had this world concept, you've got to renew yourself. You've got to put on a mind of Mashiach in his thinking. This is both both our men and our women. And you've got to think, how does how would this Messiah think? See, remember, Torah was number one for him. He said he didn't come to destroy the law. He didn't come to destroy Torah. He came to fulfill it. Hmm, yeah, that's right. Oh, I see we, we done hit the hour mark. Well, let me let me give, go ahead and see if we got anything in the chat. Hallelujah. Glad to see somebody reading. Yes, as a family. Now, let's let's go to this. This this is going to prepare your mind. Okay, now I, I I want you to see this. I'm I'm going to explain this from I, I've never heard it explained like this before, or maybe I just forgot it. But we know that the word for fire is right here. It's ish. Okay. Now, when you come down here and look at the word for man, which is ish, okay, and notice it's got a yod right there. That's a yod. See, it's a yod. But the if you just want fire, it's a olive and a sheen. Okay, but if you want man, it's Ish with a yod in the middle. And if you want Isha, Isha has the has, has the hay at the end. Now I want you to go back and I want you to start thinking. He created everything. Then after he created everything, he made man. So man was, I consider in the middle. So man's assignment is in the middle of his title. But the woman was the last thing he made or created. And guess what? Her assignment is at the end of her name or, or what she's called, woman. But man, because he was created, he was in the middle Creation, man, woman. His assignment is in the middle. So as I was pondering on this, this is this is what the father gave me. Okay. A man, if you're going to be a man, in the in the middle or the mist of your fire has to burn. His work. What was his assignment? This is a yo. This is a hand. It means work or activity. So what was his assignment? That has to burn in the middle of you. For you to accurately reflect. Man, if you want to say husband, depending on. But it, it was man because woman wasn't created. So he couldn't have been a husband. Just a thought. So what was his assignment? He gave him an assignment. And that assignment should be in the middle of your fire. 
that should be fueling the fire. It, sh- it, it shouldn't be at the beginning. It shouldn't be at the end. It should be right in the middle of the fire. This is his design. His assignment should be what's fueling your fire. And if it's not, something's off. Okay, now the woman. Notice in the order. Creation, man, woman. The woman was created at the end. Her assignment is at the end of the fire. Why is it at the end? Because she needs to always see and observe something. She needs to behold. A hay is uh, someone with raised hands. She needs to behold something. Well, she needs to behold what she was created for. And what was her assignment? Y'all better talk to me now. Her assignment was to be a help to the man who has who has the work in the middle of his fire. Then if if they're both operating like they should, the man with the work in the middle of the fire and the woman seeing at the end of her fire, she needs to see something correctly. She needs to behold something. Guess what that creates? Let me let me let me draw it out for you. Let me get my pen. I'm going to put it in purple. Look what it draws out. What does that create? If you get a man with the work in the middle of the fire and the woman whose fire, her fire, see, ish. Her fire is beholding her assignment, which is to help the man with the fire in the middle, with with the work of Yah in the middle of his hand. Look what it creates. What is that? What is a yod? Hey. What is that? What does that create? What is that? You should know it. Yah. That's when you have one. That's when the two up. Oh, mm, Father, I bless you. Gonna make me shout up in here. <laughs> That's when they are one. And the two shall be one flesh. How are they one flesh? Because he's got the work in the middle of his fire and she at the end of her fire is beholding the work that he's doing and helping it. And that creates Yah and that's what makes them one, a card. Told you I was going to explain in a way I hadn't heard it before. So, if you are a man, don't go looking for nobody if his work ain't in the middle of your fire. If you are a woman and you can't behold what you need to be beholding, you ain't ready. You need to figure that out. Because we don't want a relationship where we just, all we're doing is it's just work. Because she's not connected with the hey. Or we're just doing behold because he doesn't have the work in the right place. Everybody's got to be in their proper place. 
And when you do that, you get Yah's design. And it creates a oneness in relationships. So I hope that made sense to you. Praise Yah. All right. Yeah. Take that. Now, I want to remind you of this chart. I took assembly off. You got to be accountable to a person. Okay. Now, for next week, um, if you got any questions, send all questions for divorced women. You know, if you got a question on that topic, send them to info at mylivingbranch.org. We will answer them next week because the the part for single is gonna be is is not gonna be long. Then we're gonna be hunting for another series. Um because after going through all of this, when we get to the single woman, we didn't we didn't already kind of nip that in the bud. But we're gonna make sure that you get more for where you are. So send those questions here. And if you could, put it in the subject title, Divorced Woman. No, yeah, put it in the subject title, Divorced. Divorced Woman. Put in that in the subject. That way uh, I'll know I won't miss it and know what you're sending it for. All righty, Ms. Bacar, let's pray. Father, I thank you for your guidance. We ask you, Father, to continue to help those that are on this journey and trying to get a foothold for where they are. Help them to understand your purpose and how you built things. Father, I bless you now because I know that you can give understanding to those that want it and desire it. Father, I give you praise, honor, and esteem that you would, with your loving kindness, Build us up so that we are where we need to be in you. Thank you for your guidance. Thank you for your principles that steer our hearts. We bless you now in the name of Mashiach, Yahusha, Halel to Yahuwah. Amen. All right, Miss Baka. And if you want to be a part, it's warming up. So we'll be out and about more. If you want to get bookmarkers, bookmarkers.club. Um, had a, I was getting ready to go into the store yesterday, and um, Rock said, carry some bookmarkers. Put them, you know, intentionally. He had some people he wanted to give them to, so carry some bookmarkers. Make sure you don't leave them in the truck. So put them, got them, and because I had that assignment, I was like, okay, somebody need to get these. So just... In there, just talking to folks. Bam, they go one. Bam, they go two. Bam, they go three. Then uh, wearing some stuff that had Yahuwah and Paleo Hebrew. Yeah, we were wondering what that was on your at the checkout counter. Two people, um, cashier and another guy. I was wondering what that was on your shirt. So I just you know, give them the short version. I ain't got to, you know, hey, um, you know, uh, do you read the Bible? In the Bible, every place that you see the Lord in the ancient text, this is what was there. It's ancient Paleo Hebrew, and it says Yahuwah. If they want to know more, I give it to them. If they're receptive, you know, hey, bookmark bound, give it to them. You ain't got to do nothing long and drawn out and try to give them the history of the church and reformation, all reformation, all that stuff. Plant the seed and keep it rolling. All right. Hebrew Passover story is still available. Paperback, Kindle. Just search it for it on Amazon, man. Pasak is right around the corner. 
And if you would like to support us, you can find all our leak links in our leak link tree. This is a link tree. See, it says link tree, but it's a dot ee slash living branch. So you can find all the links if you have problems right there. Um, you want to join the family, go to livingbranch.app. You want to pray, come on over. And we just desire that you pray for us, that we will continue to do the Father's will and help his people. Restore them back to the covenant and help the lost sheep of the house of Israel. If you want to donate, you can do so through Cash App, PayPal, online donation, whatever the Father puts on your heart. All righty. Now, just by way of announcement to people on the website that part of livingbranch.org app, they've been checking. They already know. Next week, everything changes. So we won't we won't ha have a um, Thursday, uh, excuse me, Friday service because we're at the turn of the year. And because we're at the turn of the year, today is the 15th. So our service will be Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I will make those adjustments on Rumble and every place else so that you know. So don't look for a live service on on Friday. Now, for those of you that follow the calendar, what's happening on the on the um, Gregorian calendar? The Gregorian calendar is in a leap year. So in the leap year, remember, the father's calendar is fixed. So in a leap year. Another extra day is uh, extra day is added, so it's not three sixty five; it's three sixty six. So, on the father's fixed calendar, it stays the same, but on the Gregorian calendar, it sh we shift to two days to uh, Sunday for for those that might be new. As from sunset Saturday to sunset Sunday is the going to be the Shabbat. So make sure you make adjustments. Um, I might come out with a uh, unlisted video, but the only way going over, you know, just talk a little bit more about the calendar. But if I do that, it'll only be on the website because you know people want to get in debates and all that stuff. I, Got time for that, you know. You you you're free to follow whatever calendar you like, but this is what we follow, based on um, a calendar, based on the calendar we see in the Dead Sea Scrolls and how the Scripture lays it out, and it lines up. All right, let me look back over at the comments real quick. See if we had anybody else say anything. Oh yes, that's that's gonna be a good way. Just you, just one chapter a night. That we just one chapter a night. That's all you got to do, and that will open up. I'm telling you, and get everybody to participate. Read. Let everybody read. You know, if you have younger younger kids, um, if they have reading age, just pick a, a shorter verse for them to read. I'm telling you, it'll work wonders, and it'll you'll you'll be glad you did. All right, Miss Picard, this has been a wonderful lesson. I hope the the um, slide explaining the man and the woman, the Ish Isha, was helpful and beneficial. We're looking forward to a brilliant and bright and prosperous. New Year, as we bring in the new year. And just want to say Shabbat Shalom to all of our 
friends and family, both far and near. All right, Ms. Pekah, this is Maury Medan Yahoo saying unto you, Shabbat Shalom, and let's make this the best Shabbat ever. Shabbat Shalom, Ms. Pekah.